Hey everybody, AmpRepairGuy.com, 203-892-4119. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. I've been sick all this week. Uh, first few days this week, I couldn't do anything. I just was so exhausted. Um, just laid in a lazy boy chair all day. <laughs> just uh, coughing up all sorts of stuff. Not COVID, luckily. Um, I'm on antibiotics, but uh, uh, today and yesterday I got some work done on the 6 meter amp because I have so many amps here to fix and uh, I will get on all of them next week <coughs> and um, I apologize to everybody but uh, I very rarely get sick uh, so when I get sick I get real sick so okay so I got the bottom pretty much done on this thing so I got the bias circuit in I got it set up so you could switch the static plate current by flipping a switch on the front so it'll short some of the diodes out so if he wants to go from sideband to digital mode he can change the static plate current I have a circuit in here that speeds up the vacuum relays you got the vacuum relay for the bias switching got the vacuum relay for the input switching RF switching and it'll have two RJ2Bs in parallel for the output switching so this will have the filament transformer in the bottom cabinet so it'll have a cathode return line which is one of these connectors right here and I thought of this trick I, I put a resistor between the connection and ground so if this can and there also be one down in the power supply at the center tap so if this connector were to come undone the cathode would never be floating so there's a cathode return fuse and yeah, these resistors, I know they're overkill, but I have, I have like 300 of them. <laughs> so, uh, they're brand new and I, you know, they're you know, within the value they need to be, so why not use them? So, anyway, I have a <clears throat> resistor in parallel with the cathode return fuse, so if that fuse were to open, once again, the cathode would not be floating. Uh, the grid meter um, has a fuse to ground. <clears throat> so if you pull over a certain amount of grid current, it'll pop the fuse. Uh, has a standby operate switch. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I ended up putting in the chokes. I'm measuring the filament voltage right off the socket. I have a 100 ohm resistor in series with one of the chokes. So if he were to short both of the connections to ground, uh, he would end up, uh, you know, he wouldn't end up damaging anything. It would just be like putting 100 ohms across the second area of the filament transformer. So if you put one to ground, then you know, the tube would bias on, but there's no way he can end up having the full potential of the filament transformer uh, going to ground and doing all sorts of damage. So uh, I have the uh, connections coming off of the Supercon connectors going out of the terminal strip and they're RF bypassed and I have some ferret chokes on them before they get to the supply over here. It's doing two things. One feeds the um, <clears throat> the input side of the optical isolator and the other supply here is to speed up the relays. So you could say, why is he using such thick wire? Um, I didn't finish zip tying things. As you can see, I have to put some zip ties over here. And uh, anyway, why is using such thick wire? I have thousands of feet of Teflon wire. This is all Teflon wire, by the way. I love Teflon wire. And, um, <clears throat> you know, I also don't like using really, really thin wire because, you know, I'm going to have a decent sized blower underneath this thing, and I don't want wires breaking over time from flapping around. So, you know, I also don't um, hold back on using 0.01 caps to bypass uh, connections to ground. So, these um, connections I have here, they will take uh, like a fluke probe, you know, just stick right in, like a regular probe on a voltmeter. So he can stick his um, voltmeter probes in and he can fine tune his filament voltage right off the socket. <clears throat> so I just have to put the shafts in and this thing is uh, <clears throat> pretty much done under here. I'm going to put the side cover on, ran the wires up to the top, they'll be shielded. <clears throat> Let's get wire clamps. Everything has to be nice and pretty. Have the reverse connected diodes. Four 10 amp ones in parallel, reverse connected. Also have them down on the bottom. 
<coughs> so protect the plate current meter and if the this has multiple grounds there's a ground going through here too um, so I I just make sure things are as safe as possible I don't um, take any shortcuts whatsoever so that's about it for now I'm going to eat some lunch and uh, rest for a little bit and uh, thanks for watching uh, back to some regular amps early next week and then I will try to get the top portion of this done uh, a transformer has been ordered and I'd like to get this thing all finished up but it's coming out really nice so once again AmpRepairGuy.com 203-892-4119 It's 203-892-4119 And this circuit my buddy up in Canada has helped me with And um, <coughs> the rest is, you know, I've done this like a million times But, you know, uh, just uh, have to make everything nice and pretty <laughs> It takes time, people don't understand how much time this takes So, okay, take care 73.